Okay, everyone. Good morning and welcome to this webinar uh, about insider threats. As you may know, this is a part of our six part webinar series where we present some of the articles from our newly launched security report. In this year's report, you can read about our predictions for 2021 and some of our observations from our 24-7 Security Operations Center. The report includes articles written by our team of security experts about a broad set of current security challenges and topics like security predictions for 2021, lessons learned from COVID-19, Reducing the risk of insider threats, we will dive more into today. Building an enterprise security architecture. Unsanctioned remote and third party access. New paradigms for security threats in modern cloud applications. And third party dependencies in development. To find out more about the individual articles and the webinars that will be presenting them, visit mnemonic.no slash webinars. So over to today's presented. Christian Haga holds a Master of Science degree in Computer Science and works in our Governance, Risk and Compliance Department. Christian has written the security report article he will be presenting today with his colleague Anna Aune. However, she is on maternity leave currently, and he will be presenting alone today. Before I give the word to Christian, I have just one practical thing. You can submit questions throughout the presentation. If you're in a browser, you select the QI icon from the bottom of the menu. If you are in um, the application, a QA panel will appear on the right side and you then enter your question to all panelists. And Christian will answer all questions at the end of the presentation. Okay, so that's it from me. I will now hand over the presentation to Christian. Thank you. So uh, today we're going to talk about the uh, insider threat. And this is a threat that uh, I think it's really important to talk about. It should be talked more about. And by the end of this uh, session, I hope that we have all gained insight into what is the insider threat, uh, that we know how to manage the threats and learn what organizations find most difficult when managing the insider threats today. So just a quick uh, glimpse at the uh, agenda. So uh, first I'll dive into uh, defining what is an insider. Then we talk a little bit about how to manage, manage the insider threat. Then we uh, I dive into the findings from our case study that was presented in the uh, article that I had a pleasure to write together with uh, Anna Elna. And then we talk about a story of incident management, how a large organization uh, managed an insider event. Uh, before we touch upon the more uh, difficult uh, difficulty of balancing the adequate controls and privacy, because the insider threat is a threat coming from persons and they have their privacy, how do we balance security controls and privacy at the same time? Uh, at the end, we wrap up with some uh, final uh, remarks before moving on to a uh, discussion by the end of this presentation. So what is an insider? And here I like to say that an insider ranges from James Bond to Jane Doe. And when I say an insider, I guess most of you think of the spy, which infiltrates an organization, stays quiet for more than a year, maybe several years, the mole type of guy, the slick James Bond. But actually, the insider is just as often, it could be someone holding a presentation like me at the moment at the seminar, which might tell us just a little bit too much and revealing some IP 
of the company she is representing. It could be a guy at a party which just likes the attention and he starts to brag about his job and then he tells something he shouldn't to a person he might shouldn't have. It could be approached at a bar and you're not aware of what can I actually tell regarding the work I do or what can't I tell. And of course, it is also the, the person making the mistake. We slip up and uh, you press a link you might shouldn't have. Uh, and we get some ransomware that we have. There's also the insider type. So what we, what I would like to say is that it has a wide range of what is an insider. But in general, we like to filter all these types of insider and define them as either an intentional insider, which is the insider which by intent tries to harm the organization which is impacted by the insider event. And here we find more the, uh, the spy, the nation state spy. We find a disgruntled employee, ex-employee, which wants revenge towards a former, uh, former uh, employer. And then we, on the other hand, we have the unintentional insider, which could be the, the woman presenting at a conference, the guy at the party, or the everyday uh, employee uh, messing up. And, uh, but the common thing here is that the three uh, last types I presented, they're not aware at the moment that they are an insider. Uh, regardless, they are, and they create an event, but they don't mean to harm the organization they are uh, representing. So moving on to talk about how to manage this insider threats. And here I like to say that you make your own luck. And uh, to elaborate on that, uh, a couple of weeks back, I had a workshop with, uh, with a customer and a colleague um, of mine put it quite nicely with saying that an insider event is not an inconvenience or bad luck, it's the result of lacking security controls. So the better security controls you have, the more luck you have. Then with awareness training, you have uh, systems for checking uh, attachment to emails and whatnot. You have full ISMS. The more you do, the more luck you have regarding the unintentional insider and as well with detecting the intentional insider. So then let's dive into the findings from our case uh, study. And the study presented in the article it's a C-level story where we talk with uh, C-level executives at a couple of uh, large organizations here in uh, Norway. Uh, just to put it into context, they all manage uh, what we call critical infrastructure or systems here in Norway, which means that they should have some, like, it is important for them or they are ob actually obliged to have security measures. Uh, regarding cybersecurity, because cybersecurity is forever risk based. There's nothing I hate more than sort of you can never say that a customer is secure. Who is always risk based? There's always more. Well, there's of course always less. But by the end, just to put it this way, these guys should know what they're doing. So. As I mentioned, the basis, we talk to the C-level uh, executives of organization managing what we call uh, nation critical assets. And the four main findings was that mitigation efforts are not discussed among top management. We also see that insider risk threats are not formally addressed to all employees. It's easier to talk about the unintentional insider than the intentional insider. And Finally, we see that saving reputation is essential when communicating an incident, uh, uh, an in communicating an uh, incident externally. And remind this comes from the C level of the organization. So the first finding was that mitigation efforts are discussed amongst top management, but we observed that there was more a reactive discussion. Uh, so, so what should we do when the incident has occurred? 
uh, in contrast to having the more proactive discussion, talking how do we avoid an insider event. And as you can see, it's better to be prepared and know what to do and to avoid it than maybe starting when the race is almost finished. The second finding was that insider threats are not formally addressed to all employees. As mentioned, it was discussed at top level management, but they don't they find it a bit difficult to communicate to the wider range of employees. Uh, and a sentence that kept coming back was, we are a company built on trust. So they felt like they breached the trust of their employees if they sort of wanted to touch upon the insider threat. However, uh, we find it easier to address uh, the insider threat when there are more like tangible and explicit value assets in the organization. So two examples, firstly, at a convenience store, uh, we're all used to there being surveillance cameras, checking that I don't take an extra bag of uh, chips with me when I go back on Friday from the office. Uh, and the employees at the convenience store are aware of this and they find it, of course, there are uh, security cameras monitoring both uh, the customers and also the employees, and especially the employees when we see camera surveillance at the, the storage rooms. Uh, and there's no one putting a question with that. But, uh, but when we talk about more uh, well, less tangible assets or intellectual property, uh, it's way more difficult to sort of find what is actually the value. And coming from a company like Mnemonic, where IP is everything, so how do we present to our employees that the IP, what, are, what we know, what everyone here knows, that is our value? How do we define what not to talk about, what we can talk about externally? And uh, another example is working at a bank, of course, Back in the days when the bank had gold and cash stored in the vault, making it way more fun to be a bank robber than it is today. Well, then everybody knew that we're not going to give up the key to the vault to every employee. That would just be stupid. And everyone was fine with that. But that means, okay, there's some governing the, uh, the assets. Everyone knows of the assets, but you don't give like the IT guy the key to the vault so we can just go in and grab a gold bar whenever it feels like. Thirdly, they find it, the CEO level uh, executives, they find it easier to talk about the uh, unintentional insider than the intentional insider. And again, here, the uh, unintentional insider, it's the employee that doesn't intentionally wants to harm the company. It's the presenter at a conference, the guy at a party, the one pressing a link, it shouldn't. And here we find that it's easier to sort of, we, they can hide when discussing it, they can hide behind the statement like it was an honest mistake, we all mess up, but hey, we're all friend here, friends here. We are another organization built on trust, but it's human to make mistakes. So therefore, they find it easier to talk about the unintentional insider. And finally, from the C-level perspective, they find it uh, very important that to save reputation when communicating the incident externally. And that takes us right away over to the next point at the uh, agenda, which is a story on incident management at the sea uh, level. So here we talk to a com uh, communication officer at a firm, which had an insider event. And what he pointed out was that he found like three main aspects that was important to be successful in communicating an insider uh, event. You need to be active, you need to be honest, and you need to be open. So by active, he put it that they were explicitly talking to the press. They had several press conferences. Uh, and by being active, they managed to build their own story, the true story. And this goes as well with being open. So when a journalist made contact, they were open saying, yeah, we, this is what we know, this is what we can talk about, but their own, their own story. And since they were being both active and open and honest, journalists knew that, 
okay, they're telling the truth. Uh, we don't need to, well, of course, they can dig around, but they don't try to spin their own story, making suspicions, which I believe would have got way out of hand if you tried to have your cards closer to your chest. So this is, could be a takeaway. Well, if the if you are in, I was about to say bad luck, but it's not bad luck. You make your own luck. But this can be a key takeaway. So then over to the the difficult part of this uh, webinar, I would say, which is how to balance the adequate controls and the privacy of the employees. Because at the same time, you want to be protecting the company and its employees. Um, and this is a two-sided scale, where at the one part, you have the controls, you have the information security management system, the ASMS. You have an onboarding process for new employees. Uh, you have uh, the background check, you have awareness training, when the employees start, we have recurring awareness training. Like the more you do, the better you make your own luck. And you also have system monitoring and logging to detect anomalies to see uh, maybe catch both the intentional insider and the unintentional insider. Because here, yeah, uh, logging and monitoring could detect an uh, unintentional insider, which is. Uh, about to send some information that shouldn't leave the organization. But on the other hand, you have uh, privacy laws and regulations. And for us here in Europe and Norway, what stands out and everyone talks about is uh, the GDPR directive. And you also have other uh, national laws of employment. You have a work environment you want to, you want to have you, you don't want a poisonous uh, work environment with people being suspicious, looking over their shoulder, uh, governing themselves, protecting themselves, because you want a trusting environment. But what is a healthy sort of the healthy balance between trust and awareness of actually being aware that there will be a forever sustaining insider threat? So. This is really difficult. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have a good answer where to balance this. I think it's with everything in security, it is risk-based. How thorough should you do a uh, background check? It depends on what type of organization you are, which assets do you provide. Uh, in Norway, if you have uh, sort of critical, uh, nation critical information, you will be uh, governed by the Security Act and you need clearance, which is an own like uh, third government, third party uh, background check. Uh, but you don't need to have that of a thorough background check, maybe if you manage less critical uh, assets, but it doesn't mean that, okay, we don't have uh, critical assets, then we don't do any background checks. Uh, and here we might, we might see that there, there should be some guidelines, more guidelines from, uh, from the government, especially when it comes to the legality of what are you, what are you allowed to actually ask your employee, say at uh, a personal uh, employee meeting. Uh, is it fair to ask your employee, are you in debt? You have gambling debt, which makes you uh, vulnerable to blackmail which could potentially lead to you being an insider. It, is that legal? Is it not? It's difficult. So wrapping it up, uh, let's look at the final remarks. Do we get any wiser? I hope so. Uh, so what we saw then was that we have uh, the CEO level at the top management. They have a more reactive than proactive efforts but they want it to be more proactive. They all say, you know, like we are doing the reactive stuff, but they want it to be proactive. Uh, secondly, there are very little organization-wide insider risk communication. It is discussed at top-level management, but it's 
brushed under the rug when it comes to the whole organization, uh, uh, at least with the organizations we talk to. And finally, it is really hard with this balancing of privacy and security controls. There, and here there are uh, a lot of uncertainty about the legality of the controls because it's easy to see you should do thorough factual protection, you should ask your employees, that's the best, but is it legal? Is it, does it gain anything? Here I, I think there are uh, a large discussion and a good discussion that needs to be take, uh, need to take place. So, thanks for uh, listening. Uh, that was all that I had uh, today. Uh, so, if there are any uh, questions, please uh, please fire away. Okay, don't, don't see like there are any uh, questions uh, to which want to be discussed here uh, at the webinar, but uh, please feel uh, feel free to uh, reach out to me if you have any questions on email, on LinkedIn, uh, you have the uh, contact info uh, at the top of the, the presentation, uh, and I also think you will find it in the uh, uh, the invitation for this uh, webinar. Uh, if any, not anything else. Uh, yeah, finally, I could say that uh, the presentation uh, will be uh, available at the. Uh, oh, here I see there are some questions coming in, so let's address those. So the presentation will be uh, available on video. We are recording uh, this. Um, uh, I can come back to back to where it will be uh, published. Uh, Monica has a YouTube channel, so maybe there. Uh, and then the second question is, uh, well, thanks for the good uh, feedback. And uh, are there, uh, am I were actively working with any organizations to address these uh, issues? Uh, the answer to that is yes. Uh, this is something that we address while working with uh, customers. Um, and uh, again, this is risk-based while working with customers, managing, uh, uh, critical assets are being governed by the Security Act, uh, which explicitly mentioned the insider threat. Uh, that is something that I work with and have uh, experience with. Uh, and again, here, it's uh, I find it a very interesting topic to to work with. Um, Okay, so the next question would be, uh, what would be the first step for C-level management to increase focus on insider threat uh, by its uh, employees? So, firstly here, I would say that it should be discussed that everyone is aware of what the insider threat is. So, especially, I think it's not that communicated with talking at a party and presenting what should be, uh, what can you say, what shouldn't you say. Um, and I think that also uh, like an easy start. Let's don't, don't dive into the uh, intentional insider people looking over their shoulders right away. Uh, but to, and also at the very beginning, I would, I would communicate an understanding of what are the assets of the company that you are managing. So when it, 
uh, when its employees are aware of this is what makes us a great good company. This is what makes us great. This is our secret sauce. Then they don't give away the secret sauce. So I think that's a good place to start. Um, next, so what is your experience with uh, data loss technology or uh, UABA tools in Norwegian context with regard to the OVETs and Gerd Oden? Here I have some experience, but uh, for these questions, I would this question, I would really like to come come back to you. Uh, there are other employees at the Nymonic which have more experience than me, and I would like to give the best answer. So please let me uh, come back to you with that question. None. Well, uh, thanks for uh, for the uh, questions. It was uh, really fun. I hope you did get uh, any any wiser and not that afraid. Um, yeah, thanks for uh, 